Galloway's Support Through Sight Loss. Okay, good morning guys. Uh, James here from uh, Galloway's Get Active. And today we're going to bring you on a walk from White Coppice. We're going to go up to Great Hill just behind us, across to Brinskull and back along the Goiter here. It's a walk some of you may have done before. Um, big change in weather from yesterday, it's just drizzling slightly. But uh, come along with us and we'll take you along. Okay, so we've just left the uh, White Coppice Cricket car park and we're going to go up the hill behind us. Um, which leads us up towards Great Hill, but we're not going to go right to the top today. I'm just going to go up to a place called uh, Drinkwaters, and then from there we'll turn left and we'll head towards Brinskull, just across Wheelton Moor. So it should be a nice day, it's not windy, it's a few little spots of rain, but um, we'll enjoy it. So I've got Jane with me again today, uh, so Jane's going to be in my eyes and just look out. And we'll see what we can find for you and uh, show you part of the walk. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the path in front and then follow it up there and over. Okay, a good thing to have when you're walking up on this sort of terrain would be the uh, the walking poles that Jane's using. Um, they just help, they give you an extra point of contact. And, uh, morning. Morning. And they help with um, stability and they can take quite a bit of weight off your, your knees as well. So, uneven, you, ter uneven terrain, they are very helpful. And your back, James. It helps with your back as well, did Jane? Yeah. Plus, guess what? It burns more calories. There you go. <laughs> so if you do the Nordic walking, which we can probably show you on the other path at the top where it's flatter, um, you can really stride out with them. And like I say, Jane says, you can burn more calories. So yeah, always a good thing to have. So if you look at look at what Jane's wearing, she's got the uh, she's got a waterproof top. She's got uh, comfortable trousers for walking. She's got trekking poles and a hiking boots. So we've got the, the big hiking boots on. Yeah. So we've got we've got the big hiking boots on. Like I said in the foot gear guide, um, I do recommend that we wear hiking boots. Uh, you could get away with this walk today with trekking shoes, uh, but I would always prefer to have the hiking boots because it gives you. Uh, Bit, a bit of extra uh, support around the ankles. Yeah, it wouldn't be any good with trainers. No, so especially especially looking at the terrain that we're on, yeah. uh, you can see it is uh, it is quite rocky. So hiking boots on this sort of a walk, I would definitely say is probably a must. Um, but yeah, enjoying it. Uh, we'll catch you further on. Up on the moors, the sheep with the lambs. Sheep in the mist, not gorillas in the mist, we've got sheep in the mist. Okay, we're getting towards the towards the highest point now. So I'll just give you a, a view round on the day that we're on today. And as you can see, there's not, <laughs> not an awful lot to see today with the clouds. We're right in the middle of the clouds. Right, James, just got a quick tip for you for uh, when you're out walking. So, most of you won't know, but I do suffer with 
tight hips and um, one of the things you can do while you're out walking is take a bit of a wider stance just a bit more than shoulder width apart now my pull, I'm using my walking poles to put some pressure on as I squat down so I'm going to squat down and use my poles to help me and just squatting down and getting as far as you can just releases your hips and it's really good for your lower back just stay there for about 30 seconds and then come back up with the help of your poles it just releases that um, your upper thighs and around your hip area so re really good exercise if you're out walking um, just to release that discomfort Okay, this is Jane coming up the uh, the last bit, and now we're probably at the uh, the highest point of the walk. So we've come from down there, and we're going to go to our left. So you can see it's a nice, uh, relatively firm gravel rocky path that'll take us all the way back to Brinskull. Uh, towards Brin School Baths, and then we walk along the goit through the uh, through the woodland back to White Coppice. Okay, so uh, we mentioned before about using the the sticks uh, to help you out. Uh, so Jane's going to show you or demonstrate how you use the sticks. There's a right and a wrong way. So we'll start with the wrong way first. So Jane, if you just start showing us the the wrong way. So you can see that's the, the wrong way to use a stick. Okay. Now to use the so the wrong way to use a stick is if you just keep prodding them backwards and forwards. So the correct way, Jane, if you want to show the correct way to use one. So what you should be doing is as if you're using the stick, you bring it up towards where your knees are and then you push back so it's propelling you forward and by doing that you burn a lot of calories uh, you walk faster and it helps support everything so you can see the way that she's doing it so you're not bringing the sticks really that far forward you're only bringing them up to where your front knee would be and then you're sort of gently pushing behind you which is propelling, like I said before just helps propel yourself forward and it gives you some stabilisation as well one thing to do when not, when you, not to do when you're using the sticks is don't grip the handles really tight if you start gripping the handles really tight after a while your hands will start aching and your wrist will start aching. Um, another good tip that you can use with a stick is especially with being visually impaired is you can use them like you would your white cane so you can use them to find out how deep a step is when you're walking down you can put the step you can feel the the stick in front of you when you're walking down steps and under rocky terrain and then you know how far down the step is because a lot of people tend to uh, miss out on the depth perception so just using a stick can help locate where the, the next steps are especially going downhill on rocky terrain it can be a big uh, big help for I guess for guiding yourself really um, just so you know where the, the next step down is and you're not going to go down a step that you either think is, is too far um, you, you think a step is too far down and it's not and that can jar you back or vice versa if you think it's not that far and it's a lot further then you can end up falling so yeah very useful to have a sticks patch of cotton grass grows quite wild at this time of year and if you can hear we've got the sound of skylarks
You might be able to hear the skylark singing away. You may be able to hear a cuckoo. So we're now heading in towards uh, Brinskull and we're just on the, the hillside above and there's some really tall, um, looks like Scots pine trees or something here. And if you look how tall they are, I'm guessing they must be well over a hundred foot. All the way up. We've now got to the village of Brinskull and we're in the little children's play area. And you've got the uh, Brinskull Lodge. So we've got a family of Canada geese. Okay, what we've got here is we've got a uh, an old stone gatepost that's been engraved. So James just showing you've got some leaves, like look like ivy leaves, and an ivy vine with a, a flower maybe a poppy or a bindweed flower or something and then coming down it's quite tactile so you've got the leaves the flower and the leaves and it comes around on the side as well so you've got like a, a vine coming along here and we've now left Brinskull behind and we're walking alongside the goit which is a man-made watercourse from when there used to be mills and and that in the area and it's a it's a reasonable path it's um, hard dirt but there are tree roots as well so if you do do the walk just be careful of any tree roots for for trip hazards but like I say we have been down here with a group before with no uh, no incidences or anything so if you're thinking of coming on any of the walks come along we do have uh, some really good volunteer guides that help out um, and make sure everything is safe for everybody. I do uh, recce all the walks and risk assess them before we do a walk. So, um, like I say, I've been on this one a few times, so I know this one really well. Um, if we'd had any really bad weather prior to the walk, I would come and uh, re-walk it prior to the walk just to check that there's uh, that it's still okay and the paths aren't washed away or flooded or anything like that so uh, we do everything we can to make the walks as enjoyable fun and safe for everybody that takes part and um, this is probably one of the yeah one of the more challenging of the walks um, just because of the the beginning and how steep and rocky it was but other than that it's uh, it's a nice walk and uh, we will be doing it again, like I said, once the, uh, the lockdown is lifted. Hope you enjoyed the uh, the white coppice to Brinskull round, including Wheelton Moor. That's the end of the the walk. But what we thought we'd do just before we finish is when we get back to the car, um, James just going to show you a few stretches that you can do um, once you've done a walk, just to stop you from seizing up um, and stop you from aching really. So it's just just something to help out. So we're now back at the car and um, James is just going to show you a few stretches that you can do just to uh, keep yourself subtle, supple 
Flexible. Flexible. <laughs> And stop seizing up when you've done a, a long walk. Yeah. That walk, by the way, is around about five and a half miles. So uh, you might want to do a few stretches afterwards. Okay, Jane? I'm just going to lean against the car. Okay, my feet are together. Okay, I'm going to lean on the car. Take my right leg back. My left leg is bent, but 90 degrees. And my right leg is straight. And I'm getting a lower leg, well, a lower calf stretch. And my back foot, that right foot, is not completely on the floor. That's where you'll feel the stretch. And just hold these stretches for about 30 seconds. Then come back up and change legs. So my left leg is going back, the right leg is bent at 90 degrees, the knee is over the ankle, my left leg is back and I can feel the stretch in the lower calf muscle but my foot isn't all the way on the floor okay so it's a lower calf stretch holding it for 30 seconds okay now we'll do our hamstrings which is the back of the thigh so our feet about feet, feet about eight bits apart I'm going to take my right leg back only a step back and then I'm going to injure the hips and take my bum back as if I'm going to sit down but I'm not going to sit down I'm going to bend my right leg keep my left leg straight and just by doing that you should feel the stretch in the, in the hamstring at the back of the thigh you can place your hands on that right thigh if you want to and while we're in this position you can then with this straight leg, which in this instance is the left one, you can bring your toe towards your knee and it slightly gets your calf muscle a bit higher up. Okay, so that's your hamstring and your calf. Take that left leg back, just step back, step, put all your weight on that left leg. Take your bum back as if you're going to sit down bend the knee of the left leg but the right leg stays straight and the, the right foot's fully on the ground and you should feel the stretch in the right hamstring and again hold that 30 seconds and then bring your toe of the right foot towards your knee and you should get an upper calf stretch okay we can try and do a hamstring stretch. I'm going to go onto the car just for balance. I'm going to grab my leg and my left leg. My foot now is towards my bottom and my knees are together. My right leg, obviously, I'm stood on my right leg. And you stretch in the front of that left thigh. And to try, try and get a bit more stretch out of it, just try and push your hips forward a little bit and squeeze your left buttock and get a bit, a bit more of a stretch in that quad muscle the front of your thigh so let's just roll our shoulders back just for a few rounds and then roll them forward okay and then bring your arms as if you're going to give yourself a hug and you're alternating, alternating your arms on top of each other just to get your shoulders moving again and then just do some big arm circles so take your arms out and just do some circles at the side be careful there's nothing around you and going forward and then take them back just for a few arm circles okay then we'll just stretch out our upper chest and our upper back okay so I'm still with my feet hip width apart I'm going to take my hands at chest height, clench the, the, the hands together and stretch out the arms and as you stretch out the arms I want you to protrude forward slightly with the upper back so you get the stretch in the upper back. So I've actually turned my hands as if my palms are not, they're actually facing forward. I can see the back of my hands. 
Okay, then we'll just do a chest stretch, which is the opposite of what we've just done. So all we're going to do is cl clasp our hands behind our back. We want the resting on my buttocks. So all I'm going to do is lift my arms only as far as I can and stay in that stretch and again hold that for 30 seconds and only go as far as you can. And then relax. And that just gives you a few stretches to do when you finish walking, just to keep you flexible and supple. Okay, so that's it. We've, uh, we've done the walk. Uh, you've done some cool down exercises to keep you flexible and to stop you from aching. So all that's left to say is look after each other, stay safe, um, practice the social distancing and we'll see you soon. Bye! Bye.